bomb in Portland. It says you disagree with me, so you go first. What's up? You know, you, you make a, uh, several good points throughout your commentary, but I think the thing that you fail to um, really recognize in the United States when you say that, you know, well, I listen to Obama talk about how uh, in America there's no equality and nobody gets a... No, he didn't say that. Well, let me ask you, were you born with a silver spoon in your mouth? No. Neither was I. Was Obama born with a silver spoon in his mouth? No. So how do how do you how am I able to work right now? Have two kids, have a wife, have a family, support them, have a dog, drive around in my SUV to support to do my work. How am I able to do it? But yet nobody else has a chance. Let me ask you: If you if Albert Einstein had been born in a slum in Birmingham, Alabama, back in in 1890, do you think he would have been the Albert Einstein that we know? Absolutely, yeah. because he's intelligent. He would have found a way to make what he had to do true. And people who are willing to work in this country have jobs. I respectfully I disagree. What we what we are seeing what what we have seen in the United States is that you yes you you and I I don't know I don't know your age but I can tell you what I did when I was young what Louise and I did we've started seven businesses in our lives what we did we did because we didn't have to worry about what would happen if we got sick. Health insurance was cheap. You know, the first business I started, we were paying $35 a month for Blue Cross Blue Shield for ourselves and all of our employees. We, we had a business where we provided health care and daycare to all of our... In fact, we created a daycare center just for our employees because we could do that. It was, it, the, the, the environment was completely different than it is today. The, equal, the inequality in the United States has gotten so extreme. I strongly encourage you, if you really care about this issue and you're not just calling because you know, you're some GOP shell with some talking points, but if you really care about this issue, Bob, I strongly encourage you to go to Equality Trust dot org dot uk where you can find the statistics the this uh, kate pickett and and uh, wilkinson richard wilkinson wrote this book called the spirit level and they they look state by state in the united states and then they compare the united states against the 34 oecd nations and what you find is that nation after nation after nation when when inequality increases Mental illness goes up, drug abuse goes up, obesity goes up, child abuse goes up, spousal abuse goes up, homicide goes up, petty crime goes up, imprisonment goes up, and when inequality decreases, all those social ills go down, and trust in society goes up, participation in democracy goes up, education goes up. It is a, it, there is an absolute linear relationship between inequality and uh, that the list of social ills and social goods that I just laid out for you. And those are the things that provide the foundation on which you can build your business and I can build my business. And I can tell you right now, we may be the lucky ones, Bomb, but there are a whole bunch of people out there right now who are working in jobs where they are terror. They, they may have a brilliant idea. They might be the next Steve Jobs. They might be the next Albert Einstein. But if they, But they're afraid to lose their job because they will not have health insurance. They're afraid to lose their job because they can't find another one. They're afraid to leave their job because they've got a math because their ho- home is underwater. You got one in five people in America who can't find a job, and and you've got you know one in four kids in America living in poverty. Those are not the conditions under which you will have a vibrant and entrepreneurial America, and that's why we don't anymore. How many you you walk into the local mall, you walk into the local downtown? How many local businesses do you think you're going to see? What percentage do you think you're going to see? You know, I, I don't know. You don't, what percentage but, but do you think it's going to be? This. You think it's going to be 5%, 10%? That are local businesses? Yeah, locally owned businesses, entrepreneurs. You're talking about people can make it no. in this country. I, Who um, are the entrepreneurs? I say, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say in the local malls, um, and depending on which mall you go to, because here in Portland, you know, there's several. Um, I'll say it's probably 30%. Okay. H- how old are you, Bomb? Well, uh, 43 Okay, so you're so you were a little kid when Reagan. You were ten years old when Reagan, basically, or thirteen years old when Reagan came into office, or uh, ten or eleven. Do you are you do you remember the time? I mean, Reagan stopped enforcing the Sherman Act in eighty two. Do you remember the time when you could walk into a local mall and every store was locally owned? Uh, you know, actually, I remember like some strip malls and things when I was a kid. But let me ask yeah. you this: So where have they do gone? You know, uh, I'm sure they've been eaten up by corporations. So they, they've, they've merged with other businesses. They've gone out of business. And the rich got richer, and the small business people got screwed. Or sold. 
But let me ask you this. Do you not think that it has anything at all to do with parenting and priorities? No. Because I know that when you go No, I think it has to do with Ronald Reagan not enforcing the Sherman Antitrust Act and dropping the top tax rate from 74% down to 28%. Period. So how, how if, on if, earth... If you lost your job, how long, how and you couldn't find another one, how long would it be before you were out of money? Uh, I, I'm self-employed. Okay, so if your business went, I, I, if your, I, if your I business went broke, how long would it be? Uh, my business went broke in 2007 when everything crashed, and I rebuilt myself uh, uh, in the last three years, and now I'm back um, to the same level that I was back when the economy crashed. Well, good on you for that. Do you? How many? How many? Uh, you, I'm sure you have many friends. How many people do you think have the skills to be an entrepreneur like you and I have been? You know, I, I, I've got a lot of friends across a lot of spectrums. Um, I know I don't I don't have a lot of wealthy friends because I'm not a you know I wouldn't say that I'm a wealthy person. I'm, I make you know under a hundred thousand dollars a year total for my family. But Bob, my um, point is, you and I both know that managing other people, starting a business, taking risks, learning how to read a P and L and a balance sheet, those are things that don't just happen organically or naturally, and those are skill sets that a lot of people just can't acquire. And those people are never going to have those chances. And in particular, if, if you know, getting sick ruins You're them. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. So, Bob, I wish we could talk longer. We're out of time. Thank you for the call, though. And let's, let's continue this conversation again some other time.